In today's episode, we speak with Honey Smith Walls, who is a cannabis and CBD expert. If you were ever curious about cannabis, this is a don't miss episode. Ready to go on a never ending journey as I explore the keys to longevity and quality of life with the most brilliant and enlightened minds on the planet? Join us as we embark on the quest for ideal health. I'm Ava, your host and the founder of the Rockwell School of Functional and Holistic Medicine, where holistic visions come to life. Hi, honey. Hello, Ava. How are you, darling? I'm great. It's so good to talk with you again. For our viewers and listeners, um, this is Honey Smith Walls, and I interviewed with you probably a year, year and a half ago. And now I'm inter yeah, and now I'm interviewing you, which is exciting (laughs) for me. So Honey Smith Walls, the way I would describe it, she's a cannabis specialist, but she's going to be better at describing who she is and what she does. I'm gonna let her do that now. Oh, it's so kind of you to have me on your program. Thank you so much. It's delightful to be with you again. It is. And, um, the name of my company is Cannabiverum LLC. It's Latin. It means cannabis truth. And I have a podcast also by that name, Cannabis Truth Now. And so I really just try to help my community understand cannabis and how it can uplift uplift their lives, their quality of life, uh, by understanding a few fundamentals and uh, the safety. uh, uh, I'm stumbling for a word here. They need to understand that uh, cannabis is a live plant therapy, unlike what we're accustomed to in Western medication. So live plant therapy has its whole issues about it. And It, uh, because of the scheduling and legalities and the politics behind cannabis at this time, it's very difficult to find any standardization. There just isn't any. So we really have to look out for ourselves. And that's my soapbox, teaching the community how to look out for themselves in this arena of cannabis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. So you're you're a woman after my own heart because... (laughs) I love cannabis and it's kind of not to insult any other plants because I love all plants, but it's kind of a mother in ways of all plants in a large, to a large degree, in my opinion, because it does so much stuff and um, there's so many methods and ways to use it. And like you said, there is a lot of fear mongering and there's still a lot of reefer madness mindset around it, which is crazy because it's been being legally used in California for, you know, a decade or two when it's when people everywhere else are being prosecuted for nonviolent crimes and filling up our prison systems, getting stuck with psychopaths because they were sharing a plant that grows you know, people out West are selling and using it. They have boutiques and shops. And in Colorado, there are more um, cannabis um, shops than uh, Starbucks and McDonald's combined. So anyway, and another, we have so much, we have so much to talk about because you're talking to two women who are cannabis aficionados, in my opinion. I I feel I am. Do you feel the same? Yes, absolutely. Leaders in our industry in what we're doing and how we're doing it. We're we're a little different in how we educate, but we're both educators leading in the cannabis industry. Right. And for me, it's a it's a part of a collective of other modalities, but it is again, it's a mother or a father. It's a key figure in holistic medicine. And <clears throat> let's, I have a list of about 11 questions. That's kind of my format. So I'm going to start going through those. Um, what are your preferred methods of using THC, CBD, and do you lean more towards one or the other? Are you kind of a more whole plant person or tell us just your thoughts on CBD and THC and preferred methods of use? Okay. So, uh, understanding that everybody is different and I've got my own set of old lady you know, issues with neuropathy and arthritis and uh, maybe a little IBS and, you know, oh, I've got a whole organ recital going on. But the point is with cannabis, we get to be our own alchemists and we can um, 
turn up the volume on that THC or we can turn it down when we know how to. When we know how to use these compounds, blend them together like an alchemist would who's, you know, doing the plant and uh, it just takes time and discovery and understanding of what's going to happen when you use cannabis this way or this way or this way. Now, it's a puzzle. And so <laughs> for me, yeah. There's so many different ways to use it. So right. you know, topically, um, edib edibles, and then in inhalation, smoking, and they all have a different effect. They and let you just tell people briefly the difference between THC and CBD in your own words. Well, yes, of course. Yes, cannabis is both marijuana and hemp as we know them. And so same plant, just grown differently, you know, and and in marijuana, there's more THC than any other compound. There's thousands of compounds in cannabis. And yet in hemp, there's way more CBD than any other compound. And there's thousands of compounds in hemp. So the overlapping um, compound for both of those are terpenes. And terpenes are the volume control of your THC. So when you know what terpenes are in that product, you'll know whether you're going to be lifted or be sedated, have energy and focus, or maybe, you know, want to get into a good movie with, you, you know, the one you love, or go to sleep and have a nice restful sleep. So what I do personally is layer my cannabis. And I'll use Hemp maybe for you know this ouch uh, throughout the day. It's got more CBD in it, which is better for inflammation. But I've got a tumor that I'm growing on my gum, so I have to use a lot of THC too. And I use that in a in a much more concentrated form for the tumor. So then I've also got salves that I'll use, and uh, and at nighttime and and I smoke the flower throughout the day. So okay. I also microdose. So first thing in the morning, I'm having a little tea with a nug in it. Right. Oh, okay. Wow. So yeah. let me make sure I heard you correctly. You use um, topical hemp oil on an external owie on your skin or a bruise. Mm -hmm. And for a tumor, THC is more concentrated for a cancerous base a possible <laughs> or something like that, an overgrowth. Yes. Yes. And then you will also inhale and smoke throughout the day and or add it to yes. your food as an edible. So yes. we have several different applications here. Not that's kind of layering. Right. That's layering. That's really, really fascinating. And you're probably one of the only people I've talked to who really know it inside and out like I do. It's <laughs> it's fun. Um, Isn't it great when you've got, you know, like minds and you really get into the nitty gritty of all of it? So you, you are still, despite being a holistic educator, I educate in a lot of different areas. So I wouldn't consider, I, I really am a cannabis specialist compared to straight people, but you are mm. definitely superior to me. So I'm going to defer just a couple of things that I'm, you know, I'm coming up with now. Um, the Rick Simpson oil for the skin. We have a lot of that in our natural, a lot of content on that in our naturopathic oncology section. And I'm assuming if you're saying that you put this here for a tumor, that the Rick Simpson oil, which is for skin is high in THC. Is that a correct assumption? Yes. And it's it, Rick Simpson oil goes by a couple of names too. It can go by Pico, uh, which stands for just went out of my mind, can't remember anymore, uh, but it's spelled F-E-C-O and there's whatever that those stands for. Same thing, Rick Simpson oil. And then there's just, uh, and then there's R-S-O, which stands for Rick Simpson oil, but the dispensaries don't want to use Rick Simpson's name. So they're just calling it R-S-O because it is what he so let me get your quick personal opinion on that. I personally, you know, and I don't, again, unless I have studied something like literally inside and out, and there are a few subjects that I have, but this is not one of them for me to be familiar with that and know how to make it and source it. That, that is really a lot of information already, but yeah. I am not like biblically 
knowledgeable about it. But on the surface, personally, I find it offensive that they wouldn't use Rick Simpson's name because I feel he's the one that essentially brought it to the forefront. That's just my personal opinion. Do you have an opinion on that? Oh, I love old Rick. I think he's a wonderful guy and he's helped so many millions of people. God love him. You know, okay. um, there's a lot of politics in corporate. So I just... You just you thought that that's the reason. Yeah. Okay. So that we're going to, we're just going to go to the next question. Sure, sure. So I have this theory because I have created my own CBD and THC oils. And I, I would spend, um, I would get like two to four ounces in California and they would be 50 to $75 of CBD oil. And I would go through it pretty quickly because I was using it topically for menstrual cramps and I would have to reply it maybe seven times um, for a very period of about two days after which it sunk in. And then you don't really have to use it anymore for the rest of the, the cycle. Plus your cramps lessen as the time goes on usually anyway. And by the way, cramps can be totally avoided through diet and exercise um, anyway, but I wasn't eating correctly. So I was having severe cramps and um. I realized that I realized this in a really weird way, but I was vaping cannabis mm -hmm. and I used some old vaped cannabis because, you know, it piles up if you vape cannabis yeah, yeah. and you can throw it away. Most people do, but I just saved it and I put it in the container and made an oil from it. And, um, I let it macerate in the sun and, you know, shook it up and stuff. And I ended up using that. And that, even with the vaporized cannabis, for you guys that don't know what that means, it basically means kind of singed or burnt cannabis because you've essentially used most of the good properties on it. It was still way better than my hemp, my CBD oil. Wow. So, what? Wow. wow. Way better. Okay. And um, so I started just making my own with real cannabis. And here's my personal opinion. And you may be, you may be like, no, I'm against that. That's wrong. Thank you for joining us today. Be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. For more info on how you can become a holistic provider, visit us online at schoolofholisticmedicine.com. Thank you for joining us today. Be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. For more info on how you can become a holistic provider, visit us online at schoolofholisticmedicine.com.